So Mark Webb is our next speaker. Uh, Mark's been, even though he lives in Chicago, um, a member of the Pacific Planetarium Association for some time now. And um, several months back, uh, actually uh, over a year ago, uh, we started it, but it really didn't pick up steam till more recently. But the PPA started a, a uh, what we call the IDEA Committee and uh, that's the Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Accessibility Committee. And uh, Mark's going to, actually, I'm not quite sure exactly how Mark's going to do this, so I'll just let him at it. But he's going to uh, kind of share with you some of what we've been doing, et cetera. You can keep going if you like. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm not quite sure what format you're going to do this in, so yeah, I'm I, interested. I, 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 yeah, really, I'm, I'm just going to do kind of a basic uh, introduction to the committee and then talk uh, a little bit in more detail about the, the project that we're working on. So um, that's, that's where I'm going. So uh, as uh, Benjamin has, has mentioned, this is a committee of uh, the Pacific Planetarium Association. Um, I'm, I'm a member of many, many planetarium associations. So even though I don't live uh, in the, the actual region, um, I do keep in touch and I'm an active uh, participant in, in this part of, of their, their work. Um, so we uh, got together and uh, formed this committee uh, a couple of years back now. Uh, a little slow getting started, but last year really kind of uh, picked up a bit and we started meeting on a monthly basis and um, kind of spent the, the first part of our existence sort of discussing things that were going on, how we aligned with the similar uh, committee that uh, IPS is sponsoring. Um, we have members of our committee that are serving on, on that committee as well. So we try to keep our, our work in alignment with them. Um, but uh, we were looking for something that uh, we felt we could do that would be worthwhile and beneficial to the planetarium community and the, the greater community at large. Um, as Benjamin mentioned, uh, IDEA stands for Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Accessibility. Um, these are all things that, you know, everybody is in favor of, but what can you actually do to help, um, you know, when you're uh, a, a group of, of disparate planetarium people, you know, it's, it's hard to change society from from that level. So we, we discussed quite a bit, and at some point, the idea of uh, land acknowledgement statements, and I'll go into a little bit more of what that is if you're not familiar uh, shortly here, but uh, the idea of land acknowledgement statements came up, and I was uh, very interested because I felt like this was something that we could help individual planetariums achieve and at the same time uh, benefit a community at large, but with a, an end point in sight, you know, there is, a, a, there is a point where you are, can say, okay, we have done this and we're continuing to do it. Um, and also it was, it was kind of a, uh, a reasonably sized undertaking. So let me now pull up my prepared remarks so that I know what I'm saying here. Okay, so uh, we decided to uh, focus our first project as a committee on the idea of indigenous land acknowledgement. And indigenous land acknowledgement is an issue of somewhat limited awareness in the United States, although it's becoming more and more prevalent. Uh, it's just beginning to be discussed in, in some quarters. And at its simplest expression, it is a statement of recognition that the environments we inhabit today were originally settled and inhabited 
by millions of indigenous peoples before us. And that today we are acknowledging that fact. The statements themselves can be short and direct or more detailed, whatever is decided as appropriate for the intended audience and the given time and place. The purpose of the statement is not to acknowledge the historical fact of the location's provenance, but rather to acknowledge an understanding of the impact that the historical actions of colonization and marginalization of indigenous peoples continue to have on their descendants who are living today. So an example of a land acknowledgement statement might be as simple as, our planetarium is located on the occupied lands of the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi nations who are stewards of this place for many generations. Um, it can obviously be even more complex than that, but um, the important part is that the statement is collaborated in cooperation and agreement with the descendants of the indigenous people. Actually, if you sort of create one of these in the dark um, and, and just start using it, that in itself is sort of an act of marginalization. So we want to have the, the people that we are acknowledging be aware and, are, and participate, in fact, inclusion and equity uh, in, in this project. So uh, with that, I'm going to uh, set up my screen sharing here for a second and show a short video uh, that has some uh, indigenous uh, people describing what this means to them. Before I begin this morning, I'd like to recognize the Algonquin Nation, on whose traditional territory we are gathering. We acknowledge them as the past, present, and future caretakers of this land. Wherever I go on God's green earth, I do the Lakota tradition of acknowledging the four directions, the land, and the people living there. Unchimaka, as I call Grandmother Earth, the land, I view her as a, a sacred, you know, living entity, and that's why we acknowledge it in, you know, Lakota thought and philosophy. As a Native person, I'm ready for any kind of confrontation that might come up, or I'm preparing myself to remind people of all those things that they forget about. I was at a meeting in Minneapolis, and the room was primarily non-Native people. I was in a non-Native organization, but this executive director got up and said, okay, we're gonna get started. So everybody you know, was sitting down and getting quiet, and she said, I'd like to get started by acknowledging the indigenous culture of this, of Minnesota. And I was like, first, I was like, wow. And it just made everything like fall away a little bit from me. My guard went down, I was more relaxed because by saying that, like that means she understands something that is just like, you can't talk about, right? There's just, it just relaxed me as a minority, as a woman and as a native person, like it just, like, like pulled away this layer that's always there, you know. It was super cool. We're at a, we're at a time where uh, non-native cultures are understanding the traditions of indigenous peoples for for probably the first time in our histories. So, like when I go to New Zealand, the protocol is to acknowledge each other's ancestors and your mountains and your rivers, and 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 that's such a beautiful tradition. When people are in that space and say, we acknowledge who you are, this land, the, where your people come from, they're saying, we acknowledge a relationship, but we're also creating that relationship. This is a good thing. The important thing would be that folks would then sit with that. Like, what does it mean that our settlement is occupying this space? And what responsibility do I have considering that legacy? these contemporary things, right? And how do I stop distancing myself from that? Ideally, that would be 
for me the impact that this has. If you start acknowledging that the land that you're standing on and the space that you are in belong to people that are still here, like make so much more room for understanding of all these other issues. It's one of those little things that like, if it could just tip a little bit, all the like dominoes that could fall from it, I think are important. Now I'm like imagining it and like wanting to live in that, like <laughs> the thing that I'm imagining, like, yeah, that's actually really beautiful. It's just being a genuine human being to acknowledge each other's histories, um, the good and the bad. Okay, so um, that tells you a little bit about uh, land acknowledgement. Um, one of the reasons why I feel this is a good space for planetarians to participate in is that our, uh, our area is the sky above us. And that is something that all people share. Um, you know, there's One World, One Sky, uh, which is a great name for a planetarium show. But uh, we have uh, that in common. And the, the, the sky that is above us today is the sky that uh, has always been above us. So it's, I think, appropriate for us to be um, sort of at, at the vanguard of uh, this effort to uh, acknowledge uh, our uh, ancestral, uh, you know, lands uh, ownership. Um, the important part of creating a land acknowledgement statement is that it's created, as I said, in collaboration and agreement with the descendants of the indigenous people. If they need to be included. And if they cannot be identified, and sometimes they can't, um, then the best thing to do is to reach out to uh, an organization or council of native representatives of which there are many. They are very aware of the land acknowledgement uh, movement and uh, are willing to help. Um, to not involve the descendants of the people that you are acknowledging is seen by many as just another example of cultural marginalization. Now, land acknowledgement uh, is becoming standard practice in New Zealand, Australia, uh, Canada has done it for quite some time. Um, and it's standard to acknowledge indigenous peoples in publications and at public events uh, of all kinds. Um, historically, land acknowledgement has been customary among many indigenous cultures and is an expression of cross-cultural courtesy. Um, just as you would, uh, you know, if you're invited to somebody's house, you'll say something nice about it. Um, so these are the, the actual scope of the project, working with a, a group of people to create a statement and then implementing that statement at your facility is not a, an overwhelming obstacle. I mean, so many times when we talk about um, doing something to make a better society, it is overwhelming for uh, a small group to do. But the, the idea of land acknowledgement is something that can gain momentum in, in little tiny steps in many places. And eventually uh, it will catch on uh, in a much larger sense as it has done in the other countries that I mentioned. So the purpose of these statements is to show respect for indigenous peoples and recognize their enduring relationship to the land. Practicing acknowledgement can also raise awareness about histories, 
that have too often been suppressed or forgotten. Colonization is an ongoing process. Indigenous people are living among us and many are still marginalized for their identity and their lands where we live are still occupied. Land acknowledgement statements when implemented widely can raise awareness of the marginalization of these peoples and the colonization of their homeland and cultures. Awareness is the first step of a long journey towards acceptance and reconciliation. It is a practice centered on acknowledgement of the past and the present, and it is a gesture of respect toward fellow human beings. When it has become a custom, it can work to avert further continuation of cultural marginalization. And I really feel like, you know, that we can help sort of build this snowball that uh, is going to be rolled down a hill um, at some point in the future. You know, if, if everyone's planetarium is implementing a land acknowledgement statement as part of their operation, then their institution may start doing that. And if their institution starts doing that, other institutions and groups within the community may start as well. And then the whole thing builds and we get to uh, more towards the goal that we have intended. So in 2020, the PPA Idea Committee took on the task of looking into land acknowledgement and it is our hope that we can identify some best practices and resources to share with the planetarium community and to help them uh, in the process of creating and implementing a land acknowledgement uh, statement at their institution. Big ideas are often more complex in their execution than they might seem at first glance and land acknowledgement is no exception. Um, so it seemed like a worthwhile task to initiate this process and share our experience to avoid the need for every planetarian to have to reinvent the wheel for themselves. We identified a museum planetarium partner, the Willard Smith Planetarium at the Pacific Science Center in Seattle. And uh, we chose them because Pacific Science Center had already uh, waded into the uh, sort of waters of land acknowledgement. So we knew that they would be open to the idea and we were not disappointed in that. So our pilot pro program with the Willard Smith um, is in its very earliest stages, but we are working with them. And once we have uh, completed that process, we will report back to uh, the planetarium community, uh, both through uh, this portal and through IPS um, on what, what our experience was and uh, what, what we recommend for those who might be interested. So our plan has sort of three major steps uh, included within it. Uh, the first being to help the Smith Planetarium identify and contact the appropriate native representatives um, to work with both of those groups to negotiate a meaningful statement and a plan for implementation at the planetarium. And finally, to report back on that process and offer guidance resources and best practices to the planetarium community at large. Now, this is uh, something that is not strictly a PPA issue. Um, this certainly covers every geographic area on the continent. Um, and so we'd like to invite interested parties. If you have an interest in this, but are not part of the PPA, uh, umbrella, then uh, please don't let that be a barrier. Uh, reach out to us and uh, we, would, we would love to have your participation. All of our work is done virtually, so geographic location has little uh, bearing on implementing uh, the plan. Um, I'd like to offer the remainder of the time for discussion and questions. Um, we'd like to hear from you on your thoughts or experiences uh, on this topic. Um, and again, we very much uh, would like to have you be uh, a participant if, if you are interested. 
So uh, with that, I will invite questions and uh, anything else. So I have not been monitoring the chats. So if there are any questions in there, um, please let me uh, know about them. Mostly just me adding additions to some of the things you were saying, Mark. Yay. Good. Mary's a member of the committee. So um, yes. Uh, so uh, what what do you have to say? I missed. Uh... Oh, I just, uh, there was one part. Oh, when you were talking about just generally what land acknowledgements were, I just mentioned, you know, that it's one piece of what should also be an ongoing and uh, relationship with indigenous communities. So like not just a land acknowledgement, but it's a part of a relationship building with uh, local people. Um, and, oh, and I pointed out as well, which you did say later, but just that uh, it's not just that the, these are descendants of indigenous people, it is current ongoing pe indigenous people that have lived here. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, it's not like our Greek and Roman ancestors that we do their myths. Um, you know, these are, uh, these are living, breathing cultures. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'd sort of like to emphasize that again, the, the real purpose behind uh, this, this practice is to change the way people perceive indigenous populations in their mind. Um, you know, uh, certainly people of my age, uh, you know, grew up with cowboys and Indians and our, our idea of native cultures were almost entirely um, formed by uh, Hollywood media and, and other sort of uh, bastardizations of, of the ways that, that people actually lived and the events that happened to them and um, how our current uh, society came to be. So practicing uh, land acknowledgement is a way to start to get people to think about that in a different way. You know, that, that, that indigenous peoples are members of our community and that they are members of a culture that are different than ours. They are from this place, the same place that, that, uh, that we are now from. So it's, it's a matter of bringing them back into the fold of the larger society. And I think in the video, uh, you can kind of hear uh, some of the, the welcoming that, that that provides them, that it's, it's sort of an invitation of, I am, in a, I am in a place where I'm accepted for who I am not to someone else says that I am. I'd like to add that um, not as a question, but as a teaser, um, we've reached out, I'm, I'm chairing the committee and uh, we've, we've reached out to several people who have done um, collaborations or in the process of doing collaborations with indigenous people in their area. And um, we'll be featuring some of them as a panel on a future PPA Zoom seminar, and that will be coming in October. And um, yeah, I'll point out that it was a, a really great analogy uh, that Mark <laughs> made on a Dome Dialogues post that uh, led me to all these people. And he made this great analogy. That, actually, I'll, I'll read it if you don't mind, Mark. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So. Um, imagine that a major media outlet did a story about your planetarium, but they did the story without visiting or talking to anyone at your facility. And instead they based it solely on comments found in TripAdvisor. You would not be happy even if the story was complimentary. You would also feel like the person who created the story about your planetarium was not doing their job. And you'd be right about that. So, um, there's a very lively discussion about this, and um, and it seems like we we've kind of touched on something because there's there's people out there um, already doing collaborations. And again, the 
the land acknowledgement is not the end result. Uh, that's not what we're looking for. It's, we don't want to, it to become a, a rote thing where somebody reads a paper and people yawn during a land acknowledgement. The idea is to, um, you know, to pr promote change and to promote um, uh, collaboration. There is a question. It says, it may be too early to answer this, but are you thinking there would be an announcement at the start of every show or a plaque on the wall? Um, you know what? There, there is no set uh, rule for protocol on that. Um, uh, you know, I, I think most of the time it is used uh, in various kinds of public gatherings and is usually uh, incorporated into the welcoming statement. Occasionally, uh, if it is uh, a sort of a recorded show, um, it might appear at the end with uh, other credits. Um, but there, there is no hard and fast rule for, for how it is to be done. That's something to be worked out among the participants. Um, and if you want an example to of a situation that is somewhat similar to something like a planetarium show, um, the Exploratorium at the beginning of their night, uh, online night events that they've been doing and while they've been closed and such, they, they, uh, uh always, uh, have a land acknowledgement at the beginning of those programs. So that can be something to kind of look to for one that they do it as a regular uh, thing now at the beginning of the presentation. You know, have, um, uh, yeah, go ahead. I have something that might be of help to you that I learned back in my cultural geography class uh, at Plattsburgh State. Um, it was a couple of terms my geography prof professor threw out there. One was called, um, Palimpsest, and the other one was a, a, a phrase he called, it was, uh, what was it? First effective settlement. And palimpsest, I think you see pretty well expressed in the constellations themselves. And the names of the stars are typically Arabic. Uh, the names of the constellations are Latin. The mythology is from Greece. And uh, the modern take on it is American. So we got a lot of different cultures that are kind of contributed to the that they call that great tapestry of the heavens. So you see a little bit of where cultures have come in and intermingled and so on. And, and you find that too, and well, also in this first effect of settlement thing, it was like, um, I grew up in the land of the Haudenosaunee, the Seneca of uh, the Iroquois Confederacy. And the uh, throughway uh, that runs from Buffalo through Rochester, through Syracuse and uh, Albany, Utica, and all the way through there, was supposed to have been based on a road that had been based on a trail that the, the Seneca and the Onondaga and all the other members of the Confederacy used, which uh, was possibly a deer trail before that. So where the deer had laid down tracks, the, the Native Americans followed, the Iroquois followed, and then the civilization took it from there. In my own case of living in La Pascua de, de la Florida or Florida, named for the feast day of Easter, according to Juan Ponce de Leon. You see, even though the Spanish, uh, we're now part of the United States and we speak English uh, as predominantly, but there's a lot of Spanish here still too. And the, the place names are that way as well. There's, uh, you know, Florida itself, St. Augustine, uh, St. Lucie County, where I am, all named for uh, saints in the, the church calendar as late, first seen by the Spanish. And then on top of that, you have another palimpsest, which is the Seminole who were not the Native Americans who were here at the time of the 1500s. It was the Ace Indians where I am, the Yegas, further north, the Timaqua, the Appalachee, further south, the Calusa, the Miami, and so on. And um, some of the place names uh, for, well, for example, there's a place down below us, Jupiter, which is uh, not because the space program is just up the road at the treasure, at the, uh, beyond the treasure coast and the space coast. It's for Jove. Well, how did they get Jove? J-O-V-E, there you go. And uh, that was for Joe because the, the, the Hobe Indians, when the Spanish got a hold of the word Hobe, they turned it into Hove, 
which became Jove, which became Jupiter. That's kind of how that happened. So it's nice to see that. And the seminal names you've got, well, there's seminal. John, names. John, I hate to interrupt I you, know, but you're, I'm you're just, cutting into your a, own I, presentation I, time now. I'm on a lecture. That's okay. <laughs> I, I got more presentation time than eight. How much time do I have, Benjamin? You have 30 minutes. Oh, I only need like about 10. So oh, maybe, okay. Maybe. All right. Sorry, well, I, just like to, get, I, I just like to. I was just thinking of Dr. Pete. Dr. Pete's lecture was so good. His, his lecture was so good. I just thought it applied to the situation here. It is. You know, uh, I, uh, you're reading it from somewhere, right? Let's get that it, link up. It's in my head. It's in your head. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Beach was a great lecturer, man. He was the best. Awesome. I love that guy. So, uh, well, that, that, just to uh, put a. a, a a uh, sticker on, on John's comment there. Um, yeah, uh, what's, what you may find uh, is that there are a lot of different cultures that lived at different times um, in the area that, that you are in. Um, and you'll have to navigate how to handle that uh, because it's unique to every area. Um, I have included some uh, uh, links in uh, both chat windows and they uh, are sort of in descending order of, uh, of complexity. So the first one is a very general overview and the last one is a much more in-depth uh, look at uh, um, what you should be thinking about as you approach this. Um, so uh, please take a look at those. Reach out to any of us on the PPA IDEA committee uh, at any time if you have interest. Um, you'll be hearing more about this. Um, so uh, thanks for thanks for giving me a chance to introduce introduce our committee and our work.